Good morning, everyone. And uh, I'm very happy to be here to share with you my thought about 5G. So my topic is about uh, building 5G deterministic network and empower the digital transformation. So maybe you are curious about what is a 5G deterministic network. So before we talk that, let's have a brief review about the history of technology. So the steam engine was first invented in 1698 by Thomas Survey. Due to the low thermal efficiency, it's only been used for piping the water. But only after 70 years later, when Waltz enhanced this steam engine, and it provided the deterministic power, then the steam engine was widely used in transportation, textile, and other industries. And it even brings the first industrial revolution. And the electric generator was invented by Siemens in 1866. But only after Tesla invented this long-distance transmission technology, the electricity was thought as a deterministic source of energy. <clears throat> the internet was born in 19, 1969 from UpNet. But only after companies like Google, Amazon, Alibaba, and Tencent provided this simple, deterministic uh, online experience, the internet started to change people's life. So we can say all great invention can change the society one, only when some determinacy was introduced. So we all believe 5G will change the society. So it's natural to ask, do we need to introduce some determinacy to 5G? <clears throat> so let's have a look how determinacy is going on in the telco industry. The diagram in left shows that when <clears throat> the network evolve from, evolution from 2G to 3G and 4G, the telecom losing the determinacy. And in the meantime, the internet company fill up the gap by innovating on the application layer based on the best effort network. Of course, this called over the top, and the end user paid for those value. The diagram in right hand shows that clearly the value shifting accordingly. So the revenue growth is very slow for operators, only about 4%. But revenue growth had come to 400% for the OTT in the past 10 years. So for the next 10 years for 5G network construction, if the determinant curve will not going up, then the telco network business will not be sustainable. So 5G must do something to increase the determinacy. So, but what is the challenge we are facing? So you can say the connection will be a problem. The 5G will support more and more life-sensitive applications, like autonomous driving, the telemedicine surgery. The best effort network cannot meet those requirements. And the Technology capability of a telco also is difficult to catch up the industry revolution, evolution. But every year, more than 100 technology will emerge. And how to embrace those latest software technology, how to recruit the talents and retain them and train them will all be a problem. And the engagement with the ecosystem partners still in a manual mode. So the, this efficiency can never fulfill the demands of millions of enterprise demands for the 5G. And also for collaboration. In telco, most are still marketing and business driven. It's paper-based collaboration compared to the engineer level collaboration. The efficiency is low, and the in interface is ambiguity. So we can say to effectively run in 5G, we are facing structural challenges, and those problems are correlated. So it needs a framework thinking. So here we provide, provide this uh, a framework of our thinking to deal with those challenges. So you can see we have two collaborative circles. The inner circle is the internal resource, how we then across the department to work in a unified platform and doing the continuous optimization. The external circle is how the operators to build a platform 
to effectively integrate the external resource like technology, talent, and uh, partners, as well as the business service to meet those industry application demands. So the inner ring and the external uh, ring are interactive and reinforcing and recycling in each other. So this uh, framework specifically also provides four kinds of determinacy. That is connection, capability, collaboration, as well as computing. I will talk them one by one. So first, the deterministic connection. So for 5G, the full stack guarantee is needed. So from bottom up, in the data plan, this MEC enabling the connection plus computing capability, such as the UPF should be deployed close to the end user and application on demand to ensure the bandwidth and the latency. And the high performance heterogeneous computing capability should adapt to different application demands. And in the control plan, the NV slicing network will provide the diversity as well as the security. And in the management plan, the full autonomous driving experience through the domain autonomy and cross-domain orchestration will award manual process uncertainty. <coughs> Second, for deterministic capability. As we know, for so many years, for telco, we have a great solution and strategy. But how to guarantee we have the right technology and the right expert to realize it is more important. So here we offer the technical portrait of a 5G deterministic network. You can see there are many new technologies for each layer. For example, in the network layer, the TSN, the heterogeneous computing, and the cloud, the container with bare metal, and then in the management layer, such as the model, modeling, the AI, the cloud native, and the open API. But in the application layer, also many new technology, like the model-driven, the big data, AI, and the security. So if our network architecture is, and the platform is common and open, so by nature, we have built an open capability and a talent cycle with the industry. So to sync up with the industry, it's also helpful for the internal employee to grow and uh, scale development. The deterministic collaboration. I believe focus on the value creation for end user is, is a key. So through the collaboration with the open source and the standard organization, the interface across the layer is more clear. For example, in the application and the intelligent, we use Acumus. In the management and the automation layer, we use ONAP. And in the network and edge layer, we use uh, Acrino. So this open source cooperation framework will provide a code-based, clear, defined, no ambiguity interface and boundary. It will bring great benefit to improve the efficiency of cooperation and to build a good industry division of work and rebuild the mutual trust of industry. And together, we will enlarge the market and build a healthy 5G industry. Last but not least is the deterministic computing. We all think 5G should provide more than connection, that's computing capability. But how to attract the industry to consume those capability? We need to build a live and prosperous ecosystem. So provide this application-friendly running environment, user-friendly operating platform, and developer-friendly toolchain or lab. So how to leverage the open source platform to achieve this is very important. So as a summary, I, I'd like to talk that two weeks ago, the Thomas Friedman gave an interesting talk in CGGT. That's the China Going Global Think Tank. The guy who thinks the world is flat and f fast, now he talked about the world is deep, include 5G. That means 5G will deeply involved in everywhere of the society and the industry. So, Getting back, the determinacy is very important for 5G. So based on the deterministic connection, technology, collaboration, as well as computing, the 5G should provide a differentiated 
value and experience to end user. So no matter for internal employment, it employee or external partner, the consumers, as well as the enterprise customer. So easy to go, but willing to stay would be my best interpretation for 5G. Thank you.